Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're going to paint this stormy night at the seaside. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials, and let's get started. So today I am actually painting on an old canvas, and you might be able to see some of the texture and the color underneath. And I gave it a couple coats of white paint, just plain white paint, and you can use gesso if you like. I just like the texture of white paint better than the gesso. We're going to start by wetting down our one inch flat brush in our jar and wipe it on the edge pretty good. And I'm gonna lay out some matte medium onto my palette. You don't absolutely have to use the matte medium, but if you paint with me a lot, you know that I use it a lot. It's very, very helpful. I highly recommend getting some matte medium. Now what we're gonna do is just kind of lay down an underpainting here, and I'm using ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and titanium white. And these colors are gonna help us set the stage for our sky. So in this painting, we're going to be doing a lot of layers and all of those layers, while it may seem repetitive to add the same color on top of the same color, it's going to help us create some depth in our sky and in our painting. So I'm just loading up with some matte medium and I'm going to mix some ultramarine with some alizarin and it's going to give us a nice muted purple. It's not going to be a bright purple. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed and your color can be a little bit different every time. And then I'm just gonna grab a bit of white, just a little bit, and just start somewhere. Now, every time I go back for more color, I'm gonna make it a little darker or a little lighter and that's gonna help us keep a real dynamic sky. But you don't wanna just scatter it, you want there to be a little bit of a flow. So kinda of decide how you want that flow to be. And we are going to paint over all of this, so I'm not worried about brush strokes. I'm not worried about perfect blends. I'm just getting my color on there and using a little matte medium here and there. Underpainting is very, very helpful for many reasons. First of all, and one of the main reasons I'm using it here is so that as I'm doing the clouds and the details in the sky later, I don't have to worry about covering up all of the white of the canvas. Second of all, I'm gonna be working kind of thin. You know, when I scrub the clouds in, that's gonna make the paint a little on the thin side. And if it's thin and the background is white, that background is gonna show through a lot and it's gonna lighten up the overall feel of the painting, which I don't want. I want this to be kind of moody and seem like, like a stormy night. So that's why I'm laying down these colors and it helps me kind of plan out where I want the dark and the light areas in my clouds. See, so some of the areas in my sky are a little more on the red side, some are a little more on the blue side. And that's why I'm choosing to mix my color rather than using something like Diox, because that would give me a very uniform purple color, and I don't necessarily want that. You know, because when things have a little bit of a cooler tone to them, that helps them seem in shadow or farther away. When some things have a redder tone to them, then it can help them seem a little bit closer or more in the light. So I want to be able to control how cool or how warm an area is. All right, let's let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll start blocking in our clouds. Now let's start laying in our clouds and I'm going to use my cloud brush, but any kind of brush that you have that you're comfortable scrubbing with. I like this one because the bristles are long and I can lay it flat. So as long as you can kind of lay it flat like that and get some scrubbing, it doesn't really matter what kind of a brush it is. I'm going to wet the brush in my jar and then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to squeeze out as much of the water as I can. I just want it to be ever so slightly damp. I don't want this brush to be wet. 
I'm gonna start by taking some blue, quite a bit. Don't be afraid to get a lot of color on your brush here. And some of the alizarin crimson and mix it up until I get a nice dark purple color. And really load it onto your brush there. You can grab a little hint of white if you want so it's not completely black. Just a nice dark purpley color. There we go, I like that. And I have quite a bit of paint on my brush here. So I'm gonna decide where I want the darkest shadows in my clouds and I'm gonna start laying those in. Now I'm not gonna do it all over this because I want this paint to remain a little bit wet for the next part. So I'm just gonna decide on a couple of places Maybe right in here, just kind of lay that down thickly. Maybe right over here. So I'm not going for any kind of particular shapes. That doesn't look like clouds at all. Now I'm gonna come in and just grab a bit of white. Lay my brush flat. And notice I am kind of overlapping that paint that I just laid down and start scrubbing it. Again, I'm not necessarily going for cloud shapes here. I'm just laying in the dark and the light values. This is why the underpainting is so important. Now I don't have to worry about trying to hide all of that white canvas while I'm laying this in. I can just worry about getting the shadows and the highlights where I really want them. And if not all of that background gets covered, that's perfectly okay. See, notice as I scrub it in, there are some lighter and some darker spots. We are starting to see some kind of cloud-like images in here. Let's go back and do that one more time. I'm gonna mix up some more purple. And again, if it's a little more blue or a little more red than last time, that's okay. Let's lay it in here really get some good darkness going on up in this corner here. And just a bit of white. Now what I'm not doing is just scrubbing this white right over top of that. I'm kind of going around it, but because my brush is touching down into it, it's picking up some of it and mixing it with the white. So see, I didn't try and avoid that, but I didn't go right over top of it. This area, I know I want a little bit lighter. So I'm not gonna pick up quite as much of that dark color. I'm still picking it up. Still gonna kinda lay it in here. But not, not as much as I did before. When I flip my brush over, notice this side is lighter than this side. So when I flip my brush over, I'm gonna lay down a little bit more shadow color. Kind of up between those two pieces that I made. I'm just kind of tap that. I don't want to lose it completely, but it was a little too stark there. Again, a bit lighter in here. Now, because we are going to add layers and layers and layers, don't look at this and judge it and think, wow, this doesn't look like clouds. This looks like a hot mess. It's okay if it looks like a hot mess right now. This is much closer to how I paint 
for myself when I'm not doing videos for you guys. I like to do a lot of layers. And the reason I don't do that so much when I make videos is because it takes a lot of time. And, you know, I'm very conscious that sometimes you guys don't want to sit through a super long video. And then I'm always a little afraid that maybe you're going to get bored because it's repetitive, because we're doing another layer. And so I usually try and keep it as simple as possible. But I want you guys to also understand that it's okay to take your time. You know, I hear a lot of people say things like, this painting took me hours or this painting took me days. And it's almost like you're saying that because you feel like you must not be good at it if it takes you so long because you're comparing what you're doing to what I'm doing or what someone else is doing in a video. What you don't see is all of the, all of the practice and hours and hours of practice that I put into getting ready to film a video for you. And so you compare it against you know, what I'm doing and that can make you feel inadequate if it takes you a lot longer than what you feel like it took me. So we're gonna do a little bit more in depth today, really focus on layers and building a mood, building some depth and dimension in your painting. And I really want you to know that it does not matter. It honestly doesn't matter how long a painting takes you to do. If it takes you three days to do something that takes me an hour to do, that's not, that doesn't say anything about your abilities or you know, what kind of an artist you are. That just says that's how long it took you and there's nothing wrong with that. There might be things that you do quickly that would take me a long time to do. It just boils down to how we work as individuals, not our abilities. So now hopefully you can start to see a little bit of a stormy sky filled with clouds. And you know, if you're happy with the way it looks here, you can absolutely stop and leave it like this. But what I don't want you to do is stop and leave it like this because you're afraid to go on to the next step. If you're afraid to go on to the next step, that's a good thing because it means that you are about to learn something. You're about to grow in whatever it is that you're doing. So if you're afraid to do something, then you better do it. So now I'm gonna let this dry again because we're gonna come back and we're gonna start really playing with these shadows and these highlights pulling things out, pushing other things back. Now, I'm gonna go down to a smaller scrubbing brush. And just like before, I'm gonna wet it in the jar and dry it off as well as I can on a paper towel. Now, if there's any areas in here that you don't like, you feel like maybe it's too bright, not bright enough, whatever it is, this is where you can take care of all of that. So when I said not to stress about what any of this looks like, again, it's because we're gonna add more and more layers. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that my brush has a long handle. So I do recommend, no matter what kind of brush you're using, that it has a long handle. And the reason for that is because as I paint, I'm gonna hold it right here at the end of the handle, just enough so that I'm not dropping it, and I'm gonna stand back. So I am right now a full arm length and a long handle brush length away from my canvas and I'm gonna pretty much stand all the way back here and just really let the tip of the brush do the work. So let's start mixing up a little bit of our color and I'm not gonna use this color anywhere near as heavy as I did when we were painting the background. I'm gonna load up my brush. Well, I'm not loading it, I'm kind of streaking it so it gets down the bristles, but I'm using very little paint and it's quite dry. So I'm really just kind of getting it as far down on the brush as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and just make sure I don't have too much. See how little paint there is on there? I'm not laying down much. And if I wipe it on my finger, see there's almost nothing coming off on my finger. The tiniest streak, that's what I want. So now I'm holding my brush at the end 
and I'm gonna decide where I want a little bit more of a shadow or where I feel like I have a shadow that isn't quite as deep as I want it to be. So kind of right here, I like this little bit of a shadow. And see, I'm just using the tip of the brush. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. And up close like this, you might not be able to see much of the color laying down. And that's exactly why I'm telling you to stand as far back as you can. So when I show you on this wider shot, you can see that I am deepening that shadow. See, it's darker here than it was before. But on this close-up shot, it's a little bit harder to see. So if your face is right there in it, you're gonna have a harder time telling how deep you just made that shadow. So stand back as far as you can. Now I have a little spot there where I started rubbing some of the paint away because I was talking and not really paying attention. If you keep scrubbing over the same spot, you'll remove paint, so just be aware of that. See, I'm just laying in the tiniest amount of shadow. And this is still that first load of paint that wasn't even coming off of my finger. Let's go up and add a bit more in here. Don't worry if you accidentally go over top of a highlight you like, because we're gonna do the same thing with the highlights here. Just get a few of those spots. You can kind of twirl the end of the brush like that if you need to. Especially down here toward the horizon. This is where I want to focus on getting some extra shadows in there. Still just that first load of paint. The tiniest, tiniest bit is gonna go so far. I'm gonna go back to that dry spot on my plate where I mixed up the paint in the first place and kind of spiral it in there and it doesn't really look like I'm picking anything up, and again, it's not coming off of my finger. But I have just enough that I can come in here and darken up this little bit of shadow here. It's right next to that super dark spot, and I just kinda wanna extend it out a little. And this is gonna take some time. Don't be impatient and use too much paint because then you're gonna have a really hard time blending things together and taking things back and you're gonna just end up painting over top of it. We're using these first layers as a basis for what we're doing. So notice it's darkening it, but I still have that light streak there. Just fuzz out any hard lines you might've put in. whenever you need some more, just mix up a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do with a super dry brush. I'm just gonna kind of scrub in some shadows here and there throughout the entire background. And then we'll come back and we'll start working on some of the highlights. Oh, one other thing to remember is, kind of look at the color that you're working off of. So if it's bluer over here, the color that I'm scrubbing into the shadows, I'm gonna work with a little bit bluer. Over here where it's a little bit redder, I'm gonna make sure that my paint is just a little bit redder. Test on my finger, make sure there's not too much paint. And start laying in some of those shadows. Another thing I want you to do is every few minutes, actually walk away from your painting. Get as far away as you can from it and still see it and look at it from a distance. That will help you be able to see where you have shadows and highlights that maybe you want to accentuate. I 
kind of feel like these are two different layers of clouds. So I have this, which is more blue. And to me, that feels farther in the distance. This is a little more red. And especially with this brighter spot that's overlapping, it feels like these clouds are closer to me. And this looks like one movement of cloud like that. Back here where it's darker and heavier, I almost feel like I want it to be not quite straight across, but like this one has kind of a random swooped bottom. I want this one to feel flat, you know, when you see a cloud off in the distance and you can see the bottom edge of it. That's what I'm going for over here. And I know that because I stood back and I looked at it and that's exactly what I saw in it. So I'm gonna play with that and make sure that I get that look. So it's flat down here, but it's not like a solid hard line. It's still gonna be kind of soft. Don't get polka dots when you're doing this. There's no polka dots in clouds. It's really random, but at the same time, it's not random. You know, your, your shadows would all pretty much be in the same area. So on mine, the shadows are pretty much all at the bottom. Some of them do extend up into the cloud a bit, but I'm not just scattering shadows around randomly. I'm deciding where the bottom of a cloud is. So like here, this is the bottom of another piece of cloud. This is a little lighter, so I'll probably come in and add a little bit of highlight on there to say that this is the top edge of another cloud. This whole area right here is kind of flat. Not a lot going on to tell me what's a cloud, what's a shadow, a highlight. So I'm just gonna kind of make my own. In this area here, notice I'm not doing a whole lot. This is probably gonna be okay. I may add a tiny bit in there, but I'm not gonna decide until after I start getting my highlights on because I do want this area to be a little brighter than everything else. Another thing that's really helping me be able to see this at a distance, even though I'm not really taking the time to walk away from it like I normally would since I'm recording, is I have a television off to my side over here that is attached to my camera. And so I can look at that and tell where I need extra shadows and highlights. And it's a lot like you know standing back and looking at it. So if you have that ability to hook a camera up to a TV and point it at your painting, do that. Another friend of mine who is an amazing artist has a mirror set up in her studio completely opposite of her easel. So all she has to do is turn around and she can see her painting in the mirror behind her. 
that helps her be able to see the things that I'm telling you to look for when you stand back. It also puts it into reverse image, which can be really helpful because then you're not looking at exactly what you're looking at standing in front of it. It's the opposite and that forces you to pay attention to things like shapes and proportions, shadows, highlights, perspective, things like that. Never do a painting start to finish like this. You know, what looks really good up close may look really terrible at a distance and vice versa. So if I look at that and I'm standing here up close looking at it like you're looking at it right now, I'm gonna look at that and say, that doesn't look like a cloud. I can see my background through here. I can see these brush strokes. There's no dimension in here whatsoever. But if we stand back and look at it, it looks like the puffy top to a cloud. And at a distance, it actually looks nice. Now I think I am going to take just a tiny bit of white, just a tiny bit, and I'm going to mix it in there just with what's on my brush. So this is ever so slightly lighter than the shadow color that I've been working with. And I'm going to deepen this just a tiny bit. So one thing I saw when I was standing back that I hadn't planned on doing was this distant cloud, especially with how fuzzy I have it on the bottom and this lighter color from the underpainting, it almost to me looked like there might be some distant rain coming out of that cloud and kind of swooping this way. So I'm actually going to play with that and see if I can make that stand out and happen. I'm going to use a fan brush. Now, like I said, when you follow a tutorial, you miss out on a lot of the planning and experimenting. So this is me completely experimenting here. This is not something I'd planned on doing. So if it doesn't work out, I'm not too worried about it because I can just paint over it. So I'm gonna wet my fan brush in my water. Now I like this lighter under color and then I'll take a darker color just lightly over top of it. So I'm gonna start with a color similar to this and I've got more of my matte medium. I'm gonna load up with matte medium first. Just a little bit of blue, just a little bit of red. I don't want a ton of paint on my brush. I just want to get a bit of that color and a little bit of white. So I'm looking for a color similar to this. So I'm using my paint very thin. I'm going to start into my cloud a bit, up into this fuzziness. And again, I'm still holding my brush fairly far back. And I'm just gonna kinda streak downward. And maybe I need to use a little more paint than that. And maybe it's too soon to use matte medium. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of extra paint. Just always want you to feel comfortable experimenting and if something doesn't go right, don't let that be the end of your painting for the day. Just try something else. Like I said, if this doesn't work out, then I'm just going to paint over it with a similar color to the background and do something else. get a bit of that paint on the end of my brush. See how I've got a bit of a ball on the end? It's just kind of from scraping up into it like that. And I'm leaving the ball on the outside. I'm not gonna put that ball down on the canvas because that's gonna leave a lump of it right there rather than kind of streaking it down. That's more like what I want. Don't worry about what it looks like up here because we can add that shadow back in. Just get the color and that kind of directional 
streak in there. See, I'm kind of starting up here and then pulling it down to the side. I think that is about good. Let's take a tiny bit more white and now maybe some medium. Grab another small ball of it on the end of the brush and I'm using almost no pressure here. I'm just gonna kinda streak some of that lighter color in here and there. Tiny drop of medium, that will help spread that one out that got a little bit too heavy. And now let's go darker, about as dark as the bottom of that cloud already is. I'll wipe off some of that, just because it had a little too much white in it. I want to keep this on the bluer side because the base of that cloud is bluer. And I'm just going to lightly just down from the top. I'm not taking it down very far. A little bit of matte medium to clear out any streaks. And this one spot got a little bit on the blue side for me, but I'm not gonna worry about it now because if I keep going over, I'm just gonna get a blurred mess. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll deal with it later. Or maybe I won't have to, maybe I'll decide it's fine. Let's go ahead and push these shadows just a little bit more and we'll start on some highlights. All right, let's play with some highlights. So pretty similar, I'm gonna grab that little bit of white and just kind of scrub it into the tip of the brush along with what I already have. So you can see it's a much lighter version of kind of this pinky purple. And any areas, I'm not gonna do the bright white highlights just yet, I'm just gonna say any areas that I want to be brighter, I'm gonna come in with this little bit of a lighter color and that's not quite light enough. So I want this eventually to be a nice bright piece of cloud, but right now it's not. So I'm just gonna kind of break up the shape a little and brighten it up just a bit. Notice I'm kind of going outside of it because these are very soft clouds. They don't have real hard lines. I am doing a very similar thing to what we just did with the shadows. This had just a bit of a hard edge, and I don't really want that. So I'm just kind of puffing out around it and making it a little bit more scattered. Especially right here where this is touching the super dark spot. If I make this nice and bright, that's really going to set this apart from this.
But remember, when you're doing this, see, I'm not depositing anything on my finger. If you think you have enough paint on your brush, you have too much. Because see, even though it wasn't depositing any paint on my finger, I brightened up the top of that cloud very easily with almost no effort. If you want a spot to be super bright, just don't scrub the paint out onto your plate so much before you put it on. It's so like right there, I just got almost a pinpoint of white and just kind of scrubbed it into that little spot. See, just a little pinpoint on the end there and let's put it right here. Don't forget to stand back and see how you're progressing. Right here where it overlaps that super dark. I'm gonna make that super bright because that's really, really gonna push that dark spot back and give these clouds some depth. Now when I stand back and look at it, this area right here seems very bright to me. So I'm gonna come right into the center of it here, a little tiny bit bigger of a blob of white on the end of my brush than I did when making these bright points. I'm just gonna kind of start adding some super bright white into there. It doesn't have to be right along the edge. Maybe this cloud is kind of billowing toward you so clouds are very three-dimensional. They're not flat with only a top and a bottom. They've also got a part closer to you, a part farther from you. And so I'm kind of saying that this cloud is billowing toward me rather than just being highlighted on the top and dark on the bottom. So that's why I didn't take it all the way to the top edges on here, just kind of in the middle. And you can make those decisions as you get to each cloud. And each cloud is completely different. And if you get a spot that's too light, I feel like that's too light right there. I wanna maintain that shadow. Then you can always just come back, mix up more of your shadow color. And just kind of take that back. I'm just using super light pressure there. Scrub off what I can. And we'll go back to some white. So that really is the main reason that I wanted to do a video like this today is because, you know, so many of you are so frustrated when you can't think of something to paint or your painting turns out different from mine. You feel like you must have done something wrong. But I think if your painting turns out different than mine, that's perfect because that means that you were looking at it with an artistic eye. You know, you're artists, you're not photocopiers. And a photocopier's job is to create the exact same image that you feed into it. Well, my job is not to turn you into photocopiers. My job is to help you be artists. And artists take something they see filter it through their own experiences and minds and 
viewpoints, likes, dislikes, all of that, and create something that says something about them. So copying an image exactly is not necessarily art. That's not to say that, you know, somebody who is able to perfectly mimic another artist, that they're not, that they don't have art. That's not to say that. It's just to say that I don't feel like that's the definition of art. The definition of art is taking what you see and then seeing it however you see it, showing everybody how you see it. So a good example is you know, when I was getting ready for this week's video, I've been promising you guys that I would do a, a barn for each season, and I haven't done my winter barn yet. And so I actually found this image here, and I was gonna use that to kind of give me some composition ideas for my barn. And this is a royalty-free image that I found on Pixabay. So I started with this image in mind and I was going to change it into a winter scene and have a barn and everything. But then the more I painted this sky, the more into painting this sky I got. And the more into painting this sky I got, the more I started changing it to suit myself and the, the way that I paint and the way that I want to paint. And I kept seeing other things happening and none of them I felt like were conducive to creating a winter barn painting. So I scrapped that idea. Hopefully we'll still get to our winter barn. But that's where the genesis for this painting comes from. So if you guys start with an idea and start painting it, and all of a sudden something else completely different happens, I don't want you to be frustrated by that. I want you to be excited by that. I always kind of feel like paintings are in you and it's already there. You just have to let it out. You can't make it. You can't make it be something it doesn't want to be. You just have to let it out. And so it doesn't matter what you start with or why you start a particular painting. What comes out is what's going to come out. And there's no sense in being frustrated with that. Back through here, I'm not going to make the highlights quite as bright as I did in here. In fact, I'm going to go back into here and brighten some of these up more. I feel like that's kind of my focal area. So I am certainly going to add some brighter areas here than what is already here, but I'm not going to worry about getting some super bright spots. Really all I'm doing up in here, again, barely leaving any paint on my finger, so I'm just kind of getting rid of some of those lines that were laid down when we were scrubbing the, the white and the dark together in the first place. That's really about all I'm doing right here.
Let's really amp up some of these now. Just in this main area, I'm not painting over everything because again, the way to make something look super bright is to have it against something dark. And the way to make something look super dark is to have it against something bright. So I'm using slightly more paint and less pressure. If you can tell here, it's just the tip of the brush touching and I'm just kind of scooting it. And I'm gonna put that bright white kind of overlapping this dark area. All right, now on this side, as I was standing back looking at it, I almost like the light in this area. It keeps it nice and far back. I think I'm gonna amp it up just a tiny bit, but not a whole lot. I will put a little bit more highlight through the clouds on this edge, almost like this back part is wrapping around this way a little bit. And remember, this side is a little bit more on the blue side than over here, so I'm gonna make sure that the color I mix up is a little bit bluer than it is red. I'm just going for a color slightly lighter than here. So let's go ahead and test that out. That's pretty good actually. Still holding my brush at the end and standing as far back as I can comfortably. And just scrubbing a little bit of highlight Let's give our sky a rest for a minute and decide what we're doing down here because honestly, I still don't know what we're doing down here. So let's go back to our one inch flat brush and I'm gonna pick up some matte medium. So all my brush strokes are gonna go side to side because I want it to seem like water. And if I go random or up and down, that's gonna take away the illusion of water down here. If you need to use a ruler or draw on your horizon line before you paint it in, that's perfectly fine. What I'm gonna do is stand back so I'm standing directly center of my canvas Use my brush on the edge, not flat. And I'm gonna start at one side and just drag straight across to the other. Now 
Now I have a little bit of Mars Black and this old puffy angle brush. And for this part, it doesn't really matter what kind of a brush you use. I'm using this one because I'll be using it later and it works just fine for rocks. So I'm gonna load up with some black and I'm gonna take just a hint of the ultramarine and throw it in there just so I don't have a dead black. And we're gonna start putting in some rocks. So it doesn't matter where, just decide where you want some rocks and start kind of laying them in. Remember that the rocks that are gonna be in the distance are gonna be smaller than the ones in the foreground. So just some kind of jagged random shapes. And bring that out just a little bit. Try and keep the bottom fairly flat, but if it's not perfectly flat, you can adjust that when we start adding some detail into the water. And maybe I want another little set of rocks right here in front of that set, which you really can't tell right now, but we're gonna add some highlights and then you'll be able to tell better where the rocks end and where the other set begins. Maybe we'll have one just kind of hanging out back over here. And then let's add a closer one here. Maybe, maybe the viewer is standing on this set of rocks here. Let's start highlighting them. I'm gonna get just a little corner of white. I just kind of plopped it down into my black and then I'm gonna go like that and pick it up. Just so it's kind of marbled in there. It's not mixed, it's not a solid gray color. Now when you are highlighting rocks, we're gonna do this pretty simple. We're not gonna do it like we did with the sky and get all crazy. But when you're highlighting rocks, think of them as having different faces. So we would have a face pointing up, we'd have a face pointing out, maybe one toward you, away from you. They, they're in all different directions. And so you don't wanna just come across the top edge and you know put a highlight all the way across that top edge because that's not gonna look like a rock. What you wanna do is just kind of decide where an individual rock is and you get to decide where that is. So I'm gonna take that gray across the top like that and again, just across the top edge. And now we have a little highlight there. Again, I just plucked a tiny bit of white, just lay it down in my black there, and then scoop across it. And now it's kind of marbled onto my brush. And really, that's all you're doing. You're just gonna decide, I have another face there that's got a highlight. And then you can go back with a little bit of black and smooth out any lines that you don't like. And so really all creating rocks is is just adding highlights where you think they should go. You know, don't look at what I'm doing and try and replicate that. Add the highlights wherever you feel like they should be. And just like I always tell you when we're highlighting things, especially things in black and white, I just feel like that's the easiest. Don't settle for highlights that you don't like. If you don't like them, let it dry paint it black and come back and do it again. But don't paint your highlights and then show it to me and say, well, I really hate my highlights. If you hate your highlights, do them again. It'll be good practice for you anyway. But there's absolutely no reason that you have to settle for highlights that you hate. All right, now for this little rock back here, you wanna remember that things in the distance 
are gonna be smaller. And so their details are also gonna be smaller. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of black on the end of my brush. And then over here, I'm just gonna touch into the white. Can you see how much white I got on there? Just a couple little points of white. I'm just gonna come up here and barely touch, barely touch the rock and just streak it a little bit. So the same thing with these mountains. The details are gonna be quite small. So a little bit of black. And then I'm just gonna to touch lightly into the white just a tiny bit of white. And on here, I know I'm using an angle brush and I always tell you to drag the tip of the angle brush, but I'm even gonna kind of push into it just a little bit because I'm just kind of creating some little spots of highlight. Get a little bit more black to blend some of those down a bit. Don't worry about where that front rock overlaps it because we're going to add that back in with the highlights in just a minute. So just pretend like it doesn't exist right there. So I know when we did Moon River, a lot of you had a really hard time with the rocks. And I think that for the most part, you were overthinking them. There's a billion different types of rock out there and they all look different depending on the, the place where they are, what created those rocks. There's so many variables that go into it. So the rocks can look however you want them to look. So don't stress about making them look like my rocks or anybody else's rocks. You just make them look however you need them to look to make you happy. All right, let's work on this one in the front and then we're about done with rocks. We will add another little set of rocks at the very end. But not until after we get our wave in. See how I'm kind of pushing into the corner and just dashing? And that's how I'm getting that little swipe that's not necessarily drawing a line, it's not laying down too much paint, it's not making the paint too terribly bright, and it's actually taking away a little bit of control from me, which is good, because if you, if you try and micromanage the control that you have here, you're gonna end up over blending or making lines that are too soft and then don't end up looking like rocks. So just kinda let the brush do what it's gonna do. All right, let's take that same angle brush. Notice how puffy it is. This is really a sad brush. But I like that for here because see how the bristles are kind of separated and spread out? So that's gonna help me get some variation in my wave. If you don't have a brush like this, just take an angle brush that maybe is a little older, one you don't like, get it wet and kind of scrub it on something rough, maybe concrete or something. Scrub it, stab it on a paper towel, and just really work it until it starts to get like that. And then you're gonna have a good scrubbing or grass brush. This brush can be used for so much, which is why I never throw out brushes. So let's mix up some of our blue and some of our crimson and get that purple color again. I'm gonna try and keep it fairly close to what we have in the water here. It's a little bit darker and that's okay. I'm gonna decide where the topmost point of my wave is, and I feel like I want it to be right about here. So I'm gonna start with my brush horizontal, and I'm gonna bring it kind of down and out, and let it kind of fuzz out into this part of the water. I'm gonna start on that line again, only I'm gonna start angling it down just a little on this side. 
Make sure all of your brush strokes go pretty much the same direction. See how I'm starting to bring it down a bit. And we're just gonna have it kind of disappear behind that rock. If you end up painting over your rock a little, it's okay, you can come back and add your highlights back in afterwards. I'm not too worried about it. Keep a little water on your brush. Don't let your brush get too dry while we're doing this part. And on this side, we're gonna do a similar thing. We're not gonna come all the way down like we did here though. But I am starting to angle it down a little bit. And I think that's about as far as I'm gonna go. Let's just blend out this part here. A little extra water. I just picked up a tiny bit more water. Don't lose control of the direction that your brush strokes are going. You know, I did get a little ahead of myself. We do need to add some highlights into the water before we move on. So I've got this quarter inch flat brush and I'm gonna load up with some of that purple color that we just used. And grab a little bit of white. Just mix up a color that's lighter than the rest of the water. Not a ton lighter, but lighter for sure. We're gonna come across the bottom of these rocks and I'm using the edge of the brush, not the flat part. And we're just gonna kind of kind of streak around the base of these rocks a little with this lighter color. Sometimes it's really difficult painting around a camera. Just really light little brush strokes. Smear it with your finger if you need to. I'm gonna add a bit into the horizon here too. Don't blend it all out and get rid of the color underneath it. We're just adding some lighter points. And this is a really subtle color difference. But just like with the clouds, we'll add a couple little layers of that color. And let's go ahead and add a bit more white into there. And I'm gonna kind of scribble it and bring it down just a little. barely touching the canvas. And I've got my pinky, in fact, like this, and that kind of controls how far I can put the brush onto the canvas. See, my pinky and the tip of the brush are about even. So when I do that, I can only get the brush so close to the canvas. Maybe that looks like some little distant waves that are kind of coming in. And if it gets too dark in any area, just mix up some of the darker color and go back over it. Let's do some on these rocks over here and then we'll move back over to our wave. So I'm starting with that slightly darker color that we started with on the other side. And over here, I feel like these rocks are a little closer. So maybe I can put just a bit more pressure on my brush so that the, the streaks are a little bit wider.
Let's add just a bit of some highlight into our wave here. So I'm back to my angle brush. I'm getting a little bit of white, not a ton of white. Maybe I'll grab just a hint of this purple color. And I've got very little paint on my brush. And right here in this part of the curve, the innermost part of the curve, I'm just gonna kind of streak, make sure it goes in the same direction. And just add a little bit of some highlight. See how that broken brush is giving me kind of that rake effect? And that helps us be able to see the shape of our curve a little bit better. Some parts have a little more highlight on them than others. And now this, for me anyway, is the fun part. I'm gonna mix up kind of a mid-tone purple. It's lighter than the water, but it's not terribly light. And I'm gonna use the edge of the brush and I'm gonna kind of scribble. So almost like we did with the water up here, but I'm using the angle brush and I am scrubbing into the point, but I'm using very light pressure. I like little zigzags, kind of back and forth. And in some parts, you won't be able to see this that well. I'm taking it up into here a little. But like with the clouds, we're gonna add more layers. So if you can't see this right now, just hang in there. You will in just a minute. I bring it all the way across here. And when I start reaching the part of the wave that goes up, I'm gonna take it up just slightly. So I'm gonna put this part into time-lapse since you can't really see it. All right, slightly lighter. We're gonna do the same thing. There, now you can start to see that a little bit better. See how I'm kind of touching the edge to the canvas, just barely, and then scooting into the tip. Kind of back and forth, and then up as we get to the curve of the wave. And just let it kind of trail off. This is all about pressure, guys. If you put too much pressure on this brush, you're not gonna like what you get. You won't get that sea foam type look. You'll get a big streak of your color like I almost just did there. But I'm not worried about that part right there because my wave is gonna crash into that part. So that will cover. And I'm not using much paint. I really have very little paint on here. Maybe not as little as when we were doing the clouds, when I showed you that I could wipe the brush on my finger and nothing would come off. Probably more than that, but still not very much paint. Let's go one more lighter. So this is pretty light. And then we'll do the other part of our wave. And I'm not putting anywhere near as much of this lighter color on. I'm not really doing the scrubbing thing. I'm just kind of dashing into the tip of this crushed up brush. And really, you don't have to worry about doing it over here. If you're going to add rocks, I'm going to add rocks. So I'm not going to do it over there anymore. Now we're gonna mix up a much lighter color than what we did on the under part of the wave here. It's gonna be quite a bit lighter. So I'm gonna come from this top edge and I'm gonna go up and down a bit. And as I get toward the center, I don't have to bring that all the way down. I can start to let it kind of break early. And then maybe let's add 
just a little bit of a darker shadow on the top. So like on the bottom where we started with the light color, or we started with the dark color and add the highlight, let's start with the light color up here and add a little bit of low light. Super light pressure. Don't add too much. And then I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of white. And get some nice bright highlights in there. Because this is a nighttime wave, so it would be darker underneath than it would on the top. So there's not a lot of light shining through the wave through here. All right, I'm going back to my little scrubber brush, wet it in my jar, and dry it on a paper towel. You guys are gonna be sick and tired of mixing purple by the end of this, aren't you? Getting it loaded up on there, down into the bristles pretty well. It's not a ton of paint. Again, like when we were doing the clouds, I'm just kind of getting it on there. And then I'm gonna grab just a bit of white. And we're gonna kind of scrub the foam in. So just pick a spot and start kind of scrubbing just a little bit. We're not going for cloud shapes. We're just kind of making a messy little splash on there. A little bit down, out. Let the tip of the brush kind of get away from you. Lose control of it a little bit. Don't scribble like a big puff on top of here. I'm using very little pressure. All along this edge. Try not to get repeating shapes. I'm turning my brush every once in a while because that helps me get a variation in my color. As we get down toward the bottom here, we can start scribbling in slightly larger shapes because this is where the wave starts to crash. I'm going to bring it down into here just a bit. And see how I'm kind of laying my brush flat again like we did before. Bring it out into the water area there. Let's go back and get some more white. And that color, that purple color that I put on here in the first part is really starting to kind of disappear. And that's good because we wanna be able to add more and more white as we go. That's kind of the shadow color to our spray. So I'm not picking up any more of that purple. But the white that I'm laying down, I'm not laying down quite as thick, and I'm not covering all of the purple. Let's bring just a bit of that down into here a little. You don't want a real regular shape in here. Nice bright point here and there. Which is really just kind of touching it on and then leaving it. Not so much scrubbing it in. Barely, barely touching the canvas there. Just getting the tiniest amount over in this area.
Let's get a good amount of white in here, get some nice bright spots. Just like when we were doing the clouds, make sure you stand back every once in a while and see where you need a little extra. I felt like this spot needed some, some good bright white to it. All right, now I'm moving on to my half inch flat brush and this type of brush doesn't really matter. You could even use a toothbrush here. So it's got a little bit of extra water in it and I'm gonna mix it in with a bit of white paint. Just get kind of a thin white paint, it's not running. And I'm just scooting the tip of the brush into that paint to pick up as much as possible. I'm gonna hold it fairly close, I'm about an inch and a half away from the canvas and just kind of flick a light spray. It's very, very faint. Don't go too crazy with this part and end up covering your entire canvas, making it look like there's stars or snow all over it. Just a very fine mist. If some of it overlaps your rocks, that's okay. I'm gonna go back to my half inch flat brush and I'm gonna add some more rocks right here, just like we did there, and then we're done. And there's your stormy night at the seaside. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with it. You can use any colors that you like here. You don't have to use the same red and the same blue that I did. No matter what colors you decide to use, just make sure that they mix together well. Also, make sure to check out the video description below for links to where you can find me all over the internet. If you haven't yet already, please make sure you subscribe. You can do so by clicking here. If you'd like to continue painting with me, check out these two videos that I've picked just for you. Thank you as always for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.